Mechanical ventilation is an advanced respiratory therapy that is increasingly popular throughout the world. When applied appropriately, mechanical ventilation is a very powerful and effective means of saving lives, a lot of lives, because it maintains vital breathing functions in an artificial manner. However, if applied inappropriately, mechanical ventilation can be equally powerful and effective in harming patients. Mechanical ventilation might be the most challenging of all clinical therapies, not only because the therapy itself is complicated, but because the therapeutic tool, the ventilator system, is equally complicated. This is a fact not often recognized. The outcome of mechanical ventilation depends to a great extent on the specialist knowledge of the clinicians in charge of patient care. It is generally the case that the more the clinicians know, the better the outcome. Increasingly aware of this situation, Hamilton Medical is now offering a free e-learning program that focuses on teaching the basics of mechanical ventilation and ventilator systems. The course is easy, as well as interesting. In the training unit, Lung Ventilation, Natural and Artificial, we learned that artificial lung ventilation with positive pressure is achieved by intermittent alternation of airway opening pressure between the pressure baseline and the peak pressure. After studying this training unit, you should be able to explain how varying airway opening pressure, or PAO, is generated. The concept underlying a ventilator system. The conditions required for a ventilator system to work as it should. Artificial lung ventilation, or mechanical ventilation, can be performed using one of three working principles. 1. The top graph shows the pressure waveform of IPPV, or intermittent positive pressure ventilation. Using this principle, a positive airway opening pressure, or PAO, is applied intermittently above the pressure baseline, shown here in red. The positive PAO pushes the inspirator gas into the lungs. The baseline pressure is called positive end expiratory pressure, or PEEP, and is usually higher than the local atmospheric pressure. 2. The center graph shows the pressure waveform for INPV, or intermittent negative pressure ventilation. Using this principle, a negative alveolar pressure, or PALV is applied below the pressure baseline. The negative PALV sucks air into the lungs. The baseline is usually local atmospheric pressure. 3. The bottom graph shows the pressure waveform of HFV, or high frequency ventilation. Using this principle, the airway opening pressure, PAO, is swung in a defined range around a defined pressure baseline at a defined rate, which is at least 150 cycles per minute. Of the three principles, IPPV is the foundation of most modern ventilators, regardless of brand and model. From now on, whenever we say artificial lung ventilation or mechanical ventilation, we are referring to ventilation according to the principle of IPPV. The primary function of a ventilator system is to intermittently generate a positive PAO. How does it work? Well, let's begin with a simple balloon inflation system. As shown here, the system has four parts. Full gas cylinder with valve, connecting tube in blue, balloon, hand A to control the flow of passing gas. When the cylinder valve opens, the huge pressure gradient forces the gas to move into the balloon. However, by pinching the tube between finger and thumb, it's easy to control whether or how fast the balloon is inflated. Now let's add three more elements. Second tube, shown in pink, Y piece, and second controlling hand, B. After the balloon inflation system is modified as shown, can you see that we have built a very simple but fully functioning model of an IPPV ventilator system? Balloon inflation. If hand A opens the blue tube, 
and hand B closes the pink tube simultaneously, the tube pressure becomes higher than the balloon pressure. The pressure gradient then pushes the gas into the balloon and it inflates. Balloon deflation. If hand A closes the blue tube and hand B opens the pink tube simultaneously, the tube pressure becomes lower than the balloon pressure due to the elastic recoil force of the balloon wall. The pressure gradient then pushes gas out of the balloon and it deflates. With the two hands, the balloon inflation and deflation process may be fairly well controlled with respect to timing, magnitude, and speed. In a real ventilator system, hand A is replaced with an inspiratory valve and hand B with an expiratory valve. On this slide, the circuit pressure is equivalent to airway opening pressure, or PAO, and the balloon pressure to alveolar pressure, or PALV, balloon inflation. When the inspiratory valve opens and the expiratory valve closes, the circuit pressure becomes higher than the balloon pressure, and gas is pushed into the balloon. As a result, the balloon grows. Balloon deflation. When the inspiratory valve closes and the expiratory valve opens to the environment, the circuit pressure drops below the balloon pressure, and gas is pushed out of the balloon. As a result, the balloon shrinks. Valve control in a real ventilator system is more complicated than this, but the basic principle remains valid. The balloon model is highly comparable to a real ventilator system. One, the cylinder in the model corresponds to the high-pressure gas supply provided for the ventilator system. Actually, a ventilator system needs the supply of two gases, high-pressure oxygen and high-pressure air. 2. Hand A in the model corresponds to the inspiratory valve. 3. Hand B in the model corresponds to the expiratory valve. 4. The blue and pink tubes between the Y piece and the two hands correspond to a breathing circuit. 5. The blue tube piece between the Y piece and the balloon corresponds to the airway. 6. The balloon corresponds to the lungs of a ventilated patient. A tool is defined as a device that is used to produce or achieve something, but is not consumed in the process. Typical tools that we know well are a wrench, a hammer, a knife, a pair of scissors, or even a bicycle. Is a ventilator a tool for mechanical ventilation therapy? No. The therapeutic tool for mechanical ventilation is a ventilator system, which usually has six parts. 1. Supply of high-pressure air and high-pressure oxygen. 2. Supply of AC power. 3. Ventilator. 4. Breathing circuit with all necessary accessories. 5. Artificial airway and interface. 6. The lungs of a ventilated patient, or a rubber balloon to act as a simulator. The ventilator, therefore, is just one of the parts required for ventilation. It can be compared to a wheel of a bicycle. If not properly integrated into a system, a ventilator alone can do nothing about mechanical ventilation. This might appear surprising or confusing, but it is so. It is critical for all who are involved with the business of mechanical ventilation to understand the concept of ventilator system. As we already know, gas movement is driven by the presence of a pressure gradient. Inside a working ventilator system, there are invisible pressure waterfalls along the gas passageway, which begin at the air and oxygen supply outlets and end at the exit port of the expiratory valve. The Galileo ventilator system serves here as an example. One. The gas supply pressure is between 2,000 and 6,000 centimeter of water. 2. 
the tank pressure is between 280 and 340 centimeter of water. 3. The circuit pressure, equivalent to airway opening pressure, is between 5 and 40 centimeter of water. 4. The lung pressure, equivalent to alveolar pressure, is also between 5 and 40 centimeter of water. 5. The ambient pressure is 0 centimeter of water. For a ventilator system to carry out its intended function, it is essential for it to have and to maintain its designed pressure ranges. It is a critical but rarely mentioned fact that the function of a ventilator system is conditional upon many factors. In other words, the system can work as specified only when all of the required conditions are satisfied. Required conditions are 1. All of the required parts are present and properly functioning. 2. The entire system is set up correctly and securely. 3. The supply of air and oxygen is continuous and stable within specified pressure range. 4. The supply of AC power is continuous and stable within the specified range of voltage. 5. The system does not have any noticeable gas leak. 6. The gas passageway is not noticeably occluded. 7. The patient's lungs are inflatable. 8. The operator knows fully how to set up and to operate the ventilator system correctly. In ventilator design and development, engineers assume that all of these required conditions are satisfied. In the real world, however, this assumption may not always be correct. This discrepancy could be the most important and most common root cause of the troubles and problems we sometimes experience during mechanical ventilation. To sum up then, in the last training unit, lung ventilation, natural and artificial, we learned that artificial lung ventilation is achieved by varying airway opening pressure, or PAO. In this unit, we have modified a balloon inflation system into a simple but fully functioning model of a ventilator system. This model has helped us to understand how a varying PAO can be generated to intermittently inflate and deflate a balloon. Furthermore, a critical concept of a ventilator system has been introduced. We now know that the tool for mechanical ventilation therapy is the ventilator system and that the ventilator is just one of the parts required within the system. Finally, we have discussed the conditions required for a ventilator system to work as designed. If one of the conditions is not fully satisfied, the system will not work properly or will not work at all. Hamilton Medical is now offering a free e-learning program that focuses on teaching the basics of mechanical ventilation and ventilator systems. The course is easy, as well as interesting. 